Two NFL stars, Josh Norman and Demario Davis, act on something very different. Friends and advocates who are using their platform to make a dramatic difference. This is important. We play football for a living, but that's not who we are. We're human beings first. And having compassion, speaking out on issues when people are being wronged is important to us. Because of our athletic ability, it created a bridge into wealth, into affluence, into prosperity. You're obligated to show that type of respect to the people who can't be in that spot. What we try to do is uh, bring attention to the situations. And we want to um, bring that to the forefront and keep it there until something's changed. 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick says he did the right thing when he sat out the national anthem. Kaepernick says he wants to bring awareness to issues of race and policing in the country. He was kneeling for what's going on right now. This is because I'm seeing things happen to people that don't have a voice. We made it about the flag. We made it about kneeling. We made it about everything except the issue, which was black people are being killed at an alarming rate in the community. We need to address it. Here we are, years later, and we have Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Rashad Brooks, black people still being killed at alarming rates. It's like, okay, are we gonna deal with it this time? I decided to go out there and do something. Your voice needs to be heard. Your voice needs to be spoken up. We're gonna do a five-city, five-day trip. Atlanta to Buffalo, to D.C., to Minneapolis, and to L.A. We spoke to the people on the ground, and they go and talk to the city officials, the, the governors, the mayors, whoever that would speak with us, and see if we can come together and get two sides in the same room and bridge the gap. My pleasure to introduce Josh Norman and Demario Davis. The best way of helping people is going and talking to the people that are in need. They'll tell you what their needs are. Very happy to meet you. Nice to meet you. We started in Atlanta. There's gentrification happening at an alarming rate where people are being forced out of their community. And so it's great policies, but the, the community's still oppressed. A lot of people think because you live in a black city like Atlanta, these things can't happen. We were able to talk with different leaders there about, you know, opportunities in the affordable housing. We're dealing with some smart individuals like that's actually going to pioneer the future. Why aren't their voices being represented? Very similar in D.C. It was a lot more young people, and you could see their unwillingness to reform an oppressive system. And the only thing that they understand is redesign, redesign, redesign. You have to be clear in the messaging of defund police that they get to what does that mean? That means divesting from police and investing in communities. Yes. Buffalo, hard to base, really frustrating. Both sides probably want to turn away, but no, they stuck with it. And I got to tip my hats off to the city officials and the mayor. They was committed to making something work. This meeting today is a start. It's not an end. In Indianapolis, you travel through the city, you see all these opportunity zones that are already, all the infrastructure is already there. And it could have turnaround impact for a lot of people very quickly. Their city officials are so disconnected with the people on the ground. The structures that I see going on right now, but it's not for us. This funding needs to be for us. It's agreed. Then we go to LA, the heart of the discussion around what's their whole mentality is reimagining policing altogether. If you think about what makes us safe, we need housing, we need health care, we need good jobs, we need mental health resources, we need after school programs for our kids. And so we began advocating those things on people's budget. We should be creating a system that works for everybody. And we shouldn't be getting caught up in all these different conversations around race and who's right, who's wrong. Let's just find areas where we can collaborate and work together to create a better and just nation. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out. We'll find out, won't we? Literally, we'll find out. They put that statement out there, they put a bullseye on their back. You know that from the league, they're not putting out anything like that if they're not actually gonna be behind it. You know, that's growth. They hear the cries of the people, man, and that's what moves things, is the people, yo. Lord, I thank you for the individuals that came from all parts of this country. You can just change the community that you stay in. They can touch somebody way over here in Wyoming and then move me out and go out and touch the nation. Let that go forth in this place and multiply, providing hope for many.
One thing we don't need right now is for people to lose hope because it's gonna die and we will never get this chance again. We all have a social responsibility to work to make our nation better. That's what drives us, that's what moves us far beyond the ball field. It moves us into humanity.